Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I've uh, put out a video on this channel. Um, if you aren't aware, my main channel is uh, just Radix Verum. I will have a link to that in the video description. I put out more content over there, uh, but I did want to talk about something that I think is very interesting, something going on with Citadel Securities. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to play a clip real quick of Ken Griffin. Now, thank you for the opportunity to testify today on the recent market. This is him testifying on market losses to the House Committee on Financial Services. This was during the whole GameStop uh, AMC stock issue with Robin Hood. So I want you to listen to what he says here. Market events. The US capital markets are the envy of the world. Our nation's ability to allocate capital to its best and highest use creates jobs, drives innovation, and fuels our economy. America's retail investors play an important role in our capital markets. According to Gallup, about 55% of Americans own stock right now. Okay, so it's clear uh, that he's reading from a script. Um, I wanna move forward to, let's see, probably about right here where he talks about how there wasn't, you know, he, he had nothing to do with, um, you know, uh, limiting trades and Robin Hood's decision to do that. An important role in meeting the needs of retail investors during the week of January 24th. Before doing so, I want to be perfectly clear. We had no role in Robin Hood's decision to limit trading in GameStop or any of the other meme stocks. I first learned of Robin Hood's trading restrictions only after they were publicly announced. All of us at Sales Securities are committed to the healthy functioning of the US equities markets. Very interesting. And, um, you know, I just another disclaimer before we get into this, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Um, there are allegations of insider trading and bizarre activity. Uh, you can make up your own mind on that. But what's interesting is that Citadel seems to play both sides of things. So let's go ahead and get into that now. The first thing I want to bring up is a thread about Ken Griffin in Citadel and just how much money they made last year uh, compared to other hedge funds, which I find fascinating. Um, uh, everything that I'm going to be covering, I will have a link to in the video description. So let's go ahead and look at this thread. Ken Griffin and Citadel printed money last year, $28 billion in revenue, and their flagship fund returned 38.1% in a year where most investors struggled. How did they do it? Let's dig into their secrets. And uh, what I would first point out here is that that's almost 40% return on investment. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it, it probably is. So that's a, your first red flag. Your second red flag is, can we just talk about the crazy eyes here on Ken Griffin? These are like Elizabeth Holmes level crazy eyes. That's the second red flag. <laughs> okay. All right. So it continues. Citadel manages about $54 billion in assets. Its flagship fund, Wellington, returned 38.1% in 2022. Better than just about any hedge fund. In contrast, the S&P 500 lost about 19% during the same time. How good was 2022 for Citadel? So good that the company flew 10,000 employees out to Disney World for three days of fun. Um, guys, I think that that's super creepy. Like anytime an adult goes to Disney World, I think it's weird, all right? And then I have to ask the question, if you shut down the park and you're using it for yourself, I mean, was this did this have something to do with Club 33? Uh, we know about the kinds of people that work for Disney and allegations of um, PEDO stuff, we, we will just say. 
So just pointing that out there. And that was in uh, December 8th of 2022. How does Citadel do it? First, it's important to know that Citadel has two different parts, the hedge fund and the market maker. Citadel LLC manages money and Citadel Securities is a market maker. As a market maker, Citadel Securities executes trades. Brokers send their trades to Citadel to be executed. This applies to both stocks and options as well as other types of securities. So they're, uh, they're executing trades for other people. It, it's very similar to like what FTX was doing, um, how they were handling, uh, they were like an exchange for... Uh, crypto. So it, it's kind of similar to that. Um, and we do know, by the way, that there's a connection between FTX and Citadel, and we'll get into that in a moment. Citadel Securities generated record profits of $7.5 billion in 2022. It is a massively successful business. How lucky for them. How interesting. Ken Griffin and Citadel had a strong 2022. The company's market-making division generated a profit of over $7.5 billion, its best year ever. And the company's flagship hedge fund rose 38% and had a positive gain in each of its five core strategies. Now, while everybody else is experiencing losses and having a bad year, they are profiting that much. And in every one of their, their core strategies, I mean, that is another red flag. That just seems very odd. It, it doesn't seem completely organic, right? Hmm. So that article was from just a couple days ago. How does it generate such huge returns? Citadel Securities has drawn a lot of criticism for its payment for order flow methods. Essentially, Citadel pays brokers like Robinhood to send their customers trades to Citadel to execute. The SEC is expected to propose rules that would restrict or change payment for order flow. So Virtu, Citadel, etc. are pushing back. Of course they are. Now that was from June of 2022. Ken Griffin has infamously taken the opposite side of many trades that customers of Robinhood and other brokers piled into over the last couple years. Did his fund use inside information from his market maker operation to profit? That is a very good and very important question, and it makes you wonder. Citadel Securities handles a very large portion of all trading in the United States thanks to the payment for order flow model that it helped to popularize. Now, this is a very, very interesting uh thing here from uh, AMC to Moon, Bernie Madoff's firm handled 10% of all market orders. Now contrast that to today, Ken Griffin and Citadel currently handle over 40%. So you have to ask, is this another Madoff type Ponzi scheme going on? Is it an also very similar to what FTX and Sam Bankman Fried were doing? Many have speculated that Ken Griffin antagonized AMC and GameStop investors so Citadel could continue to sell them call options at a huge premium. That is very interesting. Think how much premium just got burnt trying to pull a gamma squeeze in GameStop. How long can the apes take losses like this? Incidentally, the option writer is probably Citadel. Ken Griffin says thanks. What's next? Well, for Ken Griffin, he's planning to put some of his profits toward a 51-story office tower in Manhattan, a nice new skyscraper expected to be completed in 2023. So she has a link to Grit Capital. That is her Substack uh, newsletter, and I encourage everybody to sign up for it. Uh, you'll get an email notification every time she publishes, and it is free, and she does very good work, so I highly recommend that. Now, we'll talk about payment for order flow, which she was talking about Citadel helping to popularize. Payment for order flow is a form of compensation 
usually in terms of fractions of a penny per share that a brokerage firm receives for directing orders for trade execution to a particular market maker or exchange. Payment for order flow is common in options markets and is increasingly found in equity stock market transactions. Hmm. According to the SEC, payment for order flow is a method of transferring some of the trading profits from market making to the brokers that are routing the orders. Um, PFOF has been criticized for creating potentially unfair or opportunistic conditions, this is the important part, at the expense of retail traders and investors. Ding, ding. Brokers are required by the SEC to inform clients of compensation they receive for routing their orders to a particular market maker. Potential advantages for PFOF may include better execution prices and greater market liquidity. Okay, so... Yeah, it, although the notorious Bernie Madoff was an earlier an early practitioner of payments for order flow, the practice is perfectly legal, uh, provided both parties to a transaction fulfill their duty of best execution for the customer initiating the trade. Okay, so let's move on uh, here. This is um, coming out, I believe just yesterday, this is from God of Markets on Twitter. And again, I'll have links to everything in the video description. SEC whistleblower filing that indicates Citadel submitted 80 million incorrect trades on their quote unquote blue sheets. So that, of course, is interesting. RC tweet decoded, I searched Blue Diamond and Citadel, found an SEC whistleblow filing that indicates Citadel submitted 80 million incorrect trades on their blue sheets. So this is, of course, opinion and speculation. So we don't know for sure if there's any validity to this, but I think it's worth looking at and I think it's worth investigating and talking about because it does appear that something suspicious is, in fact, going on with Citadel, uh, just based on what we were looking at, the insane return on investment that you don't typically see, um, and just the, the volume of what they're doing now uh, being way more than what Bernie Madoff was doing at the time that his Ponzi scheme collapsed. So I will read this. This is from, I believe, part of the whistleblower filing. The SEC today announced that three broker dealers have agreed to pay more than six million to settle charges for providing the SEC with incomplete and ina inaccurate securities trading information and required SEC productions known as the blue sheet data, which the SEC uses to carry out its enforcement and regulatory obligations, including the investigation of insider trading and other fraudulent activity. According to the SEC, SEC's orders, over a period of several years, Citadel Securities LLC, uh, Natixis Securities Americas LLC, and MUFG Securities Americas Inc. each made numerous deficient blue sheet submissions containing inaccurate or missing data, incorrect order execution times that failed to adjust for time zone changes, and incorrect or missing exchange codes, transaction type identifiers, opposing broker number and contraparty identifiers. Citadel, the largest provider of blue sheet data for the firm's charge today, submitted incorrect data for nearly 80 million trades, while Natixis and MUFG submitted incorrect data for approximately 150,000 trades or 650,000 trades, respectively. These deficiencies largely stemmed from undetected coding errors. None of the firms had adequate processes designed to validate the accuracy of its submissions. So that's very interesting. Um, you know, and I don't know what, if anything, will come from this. Uh, so that's just something to keep an eye on. This was another interesting thing. Uh, this was a little thread posted by Dade Murphy. He says, if anyone wants to go down a huge rabbit hole and traverse a maze of questions, check this out. 
Meet Adam Aaron. No, not our Adam Aaron. Well, maybe this Adam Aaron has no other pictures. It seems almost as if this photo was taken from an old now defunct MySpace profile. So it looks like maybe someone was trying to make it appear that the CEO of AMC was a short selling stock or something. So yeah, this is interesting. The other real Adam Aaron is this man. And here he is with Alexandra Shapiro, brand marketing and strategy, Peacock slash NBC Universal. Hmm. Okay, you can see that from her LinkedIn. This is one of the 37 capital fund filings. 37 capital fund filings. Adam Aaron is named as the signer there. Now, if we take a look at Mr. Aaron's LinkedIn page, notice the former employers, a few red flags, right? What's interesting about this is we have senior analyst at Citadel, senior analyst at Millennium Management. And this wasn't that long ago, by the way, 2013 to 15 at Citadel. Take a look at uh, Sync. Synctive Capital, so that I believe was also listed here from 2019 to 2022. So let's take a look at the people here that are listed. Hmm, Morgan Stanley, Citadel, yeah, interesting. <laughs> I try to look into Bluecrest Capital Management, but it seems legal teams have already done so. Bluecrest Capital Fair Fund website. There you go. Very interesting indeed. CFA Institute does have Adam R. Aaron as being an active member, but Adam R. Aaron and also Adam N. Aaron have been um, possibly typo associated with AMC. So this is just kind of odd. Yeah, hmm. What the? <laughs> okay, so... Now we continue. This is taken from 37 Capital's own website. Please notice the signature with the middle initial. Adam Maximilian Aaron, born September 30th, 1954, is an American businessman and chairman and CEO of AMC Entertainment Holdings. There you go. There's his little signature there, AMC Theaters. There's coincidence and then just plain weird oddities. Forgot to show the connection between Alexandra and Adam. They were... Um, listed here selling shares so 37 capital fund series one and series two and then under that adam aaron and alexandra shapiro so um yeah it's very strange was it it's maybe someone was trying to make it look like they were shorting stock and then i thought this was interesting too so apparently alameda ftx's carolyn uh, Ellison larped on 4chan and posted about how she was excited for the GME quote unquote um, self yeeting and that AMC isn't worth a day to celebrate. I'll celebrate their self yeeting with the GME one. So there's a link to the archive. You can look at it yourself. And let's just point out the little username she was using Yahweh loves you. Hmm. <laughs> this was in July of 2021. Planning out how I'm going to celebrate the eight days of Hanukkah this year. So far, I've got Doge self yeeting, GME self yeeting, and Shib self yeeting. What other bag holder self yeeting are there to celebrate later this year? I decided AMC isn't worth a day. I'll celebrate it as part of GME. She is a nasty woman. Even she saw that AMC was a scam and wasn't worth following the events of. And now I wonder what role Alameda or their friends had in trading GME. Very good question. We can talk more about Ken Griffin. This was an article I found from 2012. Billionaire thinks his money should buy more influence in government. I like the, uh, <laughs> the graphic they have here of Ken uh, on the little um, playing card. I thought that was kind of funny. Billionaire hedge fund founder Ken Griffin feels his big money should buy more influence in Washington. That's also what Sam Bankman-Fried was trying to do. 
Uh, Griffin, who donates the legal limit to Mitt Romney and his super PAC, yikes, told the Chicago Tribune that rich guys like him should be able to dictate policy and politics. The founder of the hedge fund Citadel was asked if he thought rich people had too great of an influence on politics. Quote, I think they actually have an insufficient influence, unquote. He responded. Quote, those who have enjoyed the benefits of our system more than ever now owe a duty to protect the system that has created the greatest nation on this planet, unquote. He also told the Tribune he believes he should be able to donate an unlimited amount of money to super PACs. Wow, this guy should be living in a 15th century monarchy. Our Constitution was written to protect our government from guys like Ken Griffin so lawmakers couldn't be bought. Could you imagine if rich people had even more power over the federal government? He also complained that this is a very sad moment in his lifetime, citing the now familiar Republican charge that the Obama administration has embraced class warfare, which of course it did. Ken Griffin calls it class warfare, but when the 1% continues to control most of the wealth and political power in this country and the middle class is being driven into poverty, something has to be done to redistribute the wealth of our nation. Now that, of course, came from Think Progress, and they don't understand how this works, and they don't understand how their people, the so-called Democrat Party, are the ones that are taking the money from these people and redistributing whose wealth, not the rich people's wealth, they're redistributing yours. That's, it just, it drives me insane how these people are so ignorant and how they don't see this. Like, they, the Democrats want to bring in 87,000 new IRS agents not to go after the 1% and quote-unquote redistribute their wealth, but to go after yours, to go after your $600 Venmo payments and stuff like that. Like, come on, guys, wake up. It's just funny to me. All right, this is from the Washington Post. Robin Hood and Citadel's relationship comes into focus as Washington vows to examine stock market moves. Trading firms at the center of Reddit-fueled stock surges, the meme stocks, have worked closely to share users' market data and build political influence. Um, Sam Bankman-Fried was trying to do the same thing. He was trying to buy political influence. We know that. We know he didn't just donate $40 billion to Joe Biden's campaign and to uh, Democratic campaigns. He also was using dark money to uh, give money to Republicans as well. So people need to understand that. He wasn't just doing it to the Democrats. He was doing it to both. That is what they do. They play both sides. And it kind of makes me wonder, you know, if you think back to Occupy Wall Street and um, all of that and what, what actually happened, like nothing happened to help working class or middle class people. All that did was help the rich consolidate power. That was it. And I think that it's the same thing with these like meme stocks. Because think about how hard it is to get something to go viral when it's really important or it's something, it's almost impossible for that to happen. Because remember, these people control all of the platforms. So if something goes super viral like that, you have to ask yourself why. Like, is that being... Um, you know, propped up artificially? Uh, is it being astroturfed? That was a question I had, like, hey, maybe they're, they have something to gain here by doing this. And so think about retail losses. Um, FTX, the FTX scam was billions of dollars of losses for like regular people, right? For maybe retail investors. I think that the um, GameStop and AMC is way more than that. I think there was way more of retail losses um, associated with that. And so I would just, you know, tell people to think, think about it. It, how many people lost money playing into that? And it, and it wasn't them, you know? So it's, it's just very, the whole thing is questionable to me. 
Robinhood, the online trading app heralded by some as a democratizing force to empower small investors, has spent the past few years nurturing a close relationship with one of Wall Street's biggest players and building ties with some of the most powerful institutions in Washington. The Silicon Valley-based trading platform makes a large amount of revenue from Citadel Securities, a Chicago-based financial services giant who, as we just covered, was the only one to make massive profit last year when everyone else was taking losses. Robinhood's regulatory filings show the company charges large investment firms called market makers fees to access real-time information about which stocks its users are buying and selling. That's you guys, the small retail investor. A practice some regulators and industry watchers have seen as a potential conflict of interest. Yes, because then Citadel can take that insider information and they can uh, bet against these people, right? They can short them. And I think that's what was happening. I mean, it's kind of remarkable to me how this stuff is happening and no one seems to be paying attention. And you got, you all know nothing is going to happen, by the way. Like, these people aren't going to be held accountable, of course. Robinhood routes more than half of its customer orders to Citadel. By far its largest market-making partner by volume, Robinhood disclosures show. The app also works with Virtu, G1, Execution Services, Wolverine, and Two Sigma. Robinhood's relationship with these investment firms is likely to face new scrutiny after the online broker took the extraordinary step Thursday of limiting trading of certain stocks that were propelled to meteoric heights by conversations on Reddit message boards. After the trading halt, Reddit users accused Citadel and its billionaire founder, Ken Griffin, of pressuring Robin Hood to limit trading of certain stocks, a move that may have prevented further losses for the short sellers that lost billions betting against GameStop. Okay, so... On Twitter and the Reddit forum Wall Street Bets, retail investors speculated Robinhood had caved to pressure from its powerful business partner because the company does not charge its users any fees. A key part of Robinhood's business model relies on Citadel and similar companies. There's another thing. If something is free coming out of like Silicon Valley, you are the, um, you're the, the, uh, the product there okay you're the product they're selling your information they're selling your data and that's why it's quote unquote free there is no such thing as a free lunch you all know that in a blog post Thursday afternoon, Robinhood strongly denied its move was influenced by the large investment firms it works with to execute trades. Quote, this was a risk management decision and was not made on the direction of the market makers we route to, unquote. So remember at the beginning of this video, I played a clip from Ken Griffin, the CEO of Citadel, saying, oh, we, we had nothing to do with this. We didn't pressure anybody. In fact, we didn't find out about it until everybody else found out about it. A spokeswoman for Robinhood declined to comment on the company's relationship with market makers. Joss Zeitz, a spokesman for Citadel Securities, said in a statement that the company, quote, has not instructed or otherwise caused any brokerage firm to stop, suspend, or limit trading or otherwise refuse to do business. Citadel LLC, a separate hedge fund also founded by Griffin, recently helped bail out Melvin Capital, a fund that sank 30% in a few weeks after shorting GameStop. The events triggered a swift response from a wide range of lawmakers, from AOC to Ted Cruz, who said they supported an investigation of Robin Hood's decision to block trading in GameStop. Maxine Waters announced that the House Financial Services Committee would hold a hearing to examine how the market has been manipulated by hedge funds and their financial partners to benefit themselves while others pay the price. And by the way, these hearings are simply performative in nature. Nothing will be done just like nothing was done in 2008. Lauren Head, a spokeswoman for AOC, told the Washington Post that Congresswoman believes Citadel's role needs to be examined. Well, so this was from 2021. We're in 2023. Nothing happened, right? Exactly. 
On Friday, the SEC said the agency was closely monitoring the stock market volatility, which it said has the potential to expose investors to rapid and severe losses and under undermine market confidence. Robinhood announced it would allow limited buys of GameStop and other heavily shorted stocks to resume Friday. Now, moving on uh, to another article here, Robinhood GameStop Citadel a year and billions of dollars later <clears throat> the frenzied trading in gamestop amc bed bath and beyond and other quote-unquote meme stocks in early 2021 resulted in lots of media coverage hearings on the hill and international attention the events raised critical questions about the fairness of our so-called free markets the treatment of retail investors the gamification of trading the role of certain trading strategies conflicts of interest interconnectedness and something called payment for order flow at the center of all that was the online retail broker called robin hood securities which had a slick mobile phone app that lots of young new retail retail traders were using almost all trading for the first time. They don't know anything about what they're doing, basically. July 29th marks the one year anniversary of Robinhood going public at $38 a share. It's now hovering at around $9 a share, down $29 or more than 76%. Meaning if you'd invested $1,000 in Robinhood on the day of the IPO, it would only be worth a mere $240 today. In the past year, Robinhood has lost 10% of their monthly users laid off 9% of their employees. Of course, Robinhood's retail traders have fared even worse. It is clear that Robinhood and the frenzy associated with it will have long-term implications for the finance industry, policymakers, and investors. That's why, from the beginning of the GameStop frenzy, Better Markets has provided insights into how these events occurred, the key players, and many of the topics, terms, and activities relevant to these happenings. Listed in link below are some of the work and information that Better Markets has compiled since the frenzy burst into public consciousness in January of 2021. A real Robin Hood on Wall Street is needed to democratize equity markets without exploitation. The Better Markets team authored an article in the Western New England Law Review titled Democratizing Equity Markets with and Without Exploitation. Um, Robinhood, GameStop, hedge funds, gamification, high-frequency trading, and more. The authors argue that Wall Street and finance more generally can and should be democratized. But the Robinhood model based on maximizing frequent high-risk trading prompted by predatory gamified apps to generate as much uh, PFOF as possible is not how. These are exploitative practices that enrich Wall Street at the expense of Main Street and often those least able to afford losses. Yes, that's right. Uh, SEC activities related to protecting retail investors to gather information and consider proposing rules to protect retail investors. The SEC issued a request for information on so-called digital engagement practices, which are commonly referred to as gamification. Many filed uh, comment letters, including better markets, and we look forward to the SEC proposing rules informed by this RFI and the SEC's other work. Right, because I'm sure that's going to happen any minute now. Then they made a um, a little uh, documentary on HBO titled Gaming Wall Street. You can watch the trailer um, that is linked below. It's a, a terrific look back at the GameStop trading frenzy, the short sellers, Robin Hood's actions, shutting off the buy button, how Wall Street is rigged, and much more. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, Better Markets President and CEO Dennis Kaleller took part in a Reddit AMA on uh, r slash GME to answer questions from the community about the GameStop trading frenzy. So there's a lot of other stuff here. They talk about some of the different terms that they use. Um, then we have this article, a shadowy but powerful Wall Street firm has its moment in uh, Washington. Citadel and its sister business, Citadel Securities, were all over the GameStop debacle. Its founder will face sharp questions Thursday. 
The GameStop saga was a David versus Goliath story, pitting small traders against big hedge funds and a cautionary tale about what happens when fast-moving Silicon Valley collides with the heavily regulated world of Wall Street. Among its ensemble cast is one of the finance world's most influential and perhaps least visible figures, the Chicago billionaire Kenneth Griffin. And when the House Financial Services Committee meets on Thursday to question key players in the GameStop match, Griffin will be asked about the two distinct roles his company played in a two-week trading frenzy that created and destroyed billions of dollars in wealth. The first, Citadel is a hedge fund firm that placed a small bet that GameStop shares would fall. It suffered when the shares rose because millions of small investors began buying up the stock, but not nearly as badly as another hedge fund, Melvin Capital, which took a $2 billion investment from Citadel and some of its employees to shore up finances. So it's like they acquire Melvin. The second business, Citadel Securities, is a wholesale broker that says it handles more than a quarter of all stock trading in the U.S. It pays Robinhood and other retail brokerages for the right to fulfill their customer trades and makes money by pocketing a tiny price discrepancies between buy and sell orders, which can quickly add up. And as small investors were furiously buying and selling GameStop shares, many through trading apps like Robinhood, Citadel Securities was doing brisk business. So they're, they, <sighs> It's just insane to me how this is allowed to happen. Citadel is one of the many really gigantic financial firms that are incredibly important and interwoven throughout the financial system, but are never visible to the public. Dennis Kaleller, president and CEO of Better Markets, a nonprofit group that supports additional financial regulation. They operate in the shadows and they want to stay in the shadows and they don't want anyone looking at how they conduct their business. So by the way, as these meme stocks were being pumped up by regular people who were maybe first time investors and didn't know anything about what they were doing and were buying into this, Citadel is making money for every single transaction. On Thursday, lawmakers will put a spotlight on Griffin. He is scheduled, along with the CEOs of Robinhood and Reddit, to testify before the House Committee about the GameStop rally. Also on the witness list is Keith Gill, a Reddit user and YouTube poster who made millions off the GameStop trade he helped popularize, and Gabe Plotkin, the founder and chief executive of Melvin, who was so badly squeezed he accepted Citadel's help. In particular, Griffin will have to address speculation. He used his firm's involvement to manipulate the situation for his own benefit. Small investors who were irritated that Robinhood put curbs on GameStop trading have suggested Citadel was behind the limits, applying pressure to Robinhood to protect its own bet against the video game retailer, assertions both Citadel and Robinhood have denied. They called it an insane, like, conspiracy theory. Now, there was a class action lawsuit that was filed um, in, I believe, Florida that was dismissed by a federal judge. But there were some communications between Citadel and Robin Hood that came out. You, you can read the court filings because there does seem to be some kind of, like, potential, maybe insider trading going on there in those communications. Um, I can't say for sure, so you guys should look at that, read it for yourself, and come to your own conclusions about it. And finally, I just want to close out here uh, with this, um, this statement that just came out two days ago. The World Bank cuts 2023 forecasts and is warning of a global recession Yes, a global recession. The combination of slow growth, tightening financial conditions, and heavy indebtedness is likely to weaken investment and trigger corporate defaults. What that means is more consolidation of wealth and power for the top 1% while the rest of us suffer. This is something that I have been talking about and warning about for a while. If you've been paying attention and following my work, I have been telling people that you need to be prepared for things to get much worse before they get better. I've encouraged people to have 
um, six months of food and water and savings and cash around just in case something happens. You know, most Americans currently, though, live paycheck to paycheck and they have massive credit card debt. So the cost of living continues to skyrocket. People are being priced out of the housing market and um, their wages are stagnant and layoffs are happening. So it is going to be a bloodbath, but all of this stuff is done on purpose. And so we have to ask ourselves, is the next financial implosion going to be a citadel? Uh, are they going to be the next that maybe goes bankrupt or that we learned was a Ponzi scheme? I think there needs to be for sure more investigation into Citadel Securities. I'd like to know more about their connection to FTX and Alameda Research. Um, and I think that it's anytime there is that kind of return on investment, something isn't right there. Uh, and so I think that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. So anyways, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Whee!